Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India PTL course environmental chemistry and microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shudha Goel and myself Professor Anjali Pal. We are both from Department of Civil Engineering IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part environmental chemistry will be covered by me and the second part environmental microbiology will be taught by Professor Shudha Goel. Now, this is the module 2 and this is my 10th lecture on this is on chemical equilibrium. The, the topics here I have covered it is different problems as well as observations that I wanted to combine here and all are on the chemical equilibrium concept. So, I hope you will like it. The first one is the copper detection. You know that almost all metals are white in color, but the copper you see that it is brownish color and gold you see that it is yellow color. Now, when copper you keep it in air then it slowly goes to copper 2 plus you see some blackish tint in the surface of the copper metal that is nothing but copper oxide and then copper 2 plus we know that it is blue in color. Now, copper produces copper sulphate upon reaction with dilute H2O4 in air this is slow conversion. So, copper if you put in copper sulphate in H2O4 dilute H2O4 then it will in air under air then it will slowly produce the copper sulphate solution which is blue in color and which is known as blue vitriol. On the other hand what uh, we call the sulfuric acid it is the oil of vitriol. Now, we know that from acid base chapter I told you that copper sulphate is a normal salt it is neither a acid an acid salt or a basic salt it is a normal salt and it forms a complex salt with dilute ammonia. So, if you take some copper ion say copper sulphate then you put the ammonia solution there then it will it will depending on the concentration of ammonia different reaction occurs. What is happening introduction of dilute ammonia to blue copper sulphate solution if you take in a test tube some copper sulphate solution and if you add ammonia solution there if it is little amount ammonia is low amount or low concentration then what will happen then it will form a basic salt this is nothing but copper sulphate copper hydroxide ok and it is a blue white precipitate ok you will see a blue white precipitate formed in the test tube. Now, if you increase the concentration of ammonia then what will happen will finally, this precipitate goes to goes to solution how due to the formation of copper amine complex Cu NH 3 whole 4 2 plus this is the ion and the corresponding salt is Cu NH 3 whole 4 sulphate because sulphate ion is there. So, it will form this salt. So, you have increased the ammonia then the this precipitate will go 
into solution and it will form this one. This gives a transparent blue solution and this is a taste of copper 2 plus ion. This is also shown here as the reaction copper dilute H2SO4 gives copper sulphate solution which is blue then copper sulphate with aqueous ammonia gives this basic salt which is blue, blue white precipitate this is a basic salt and then you increase the ammonia concentration higher concentration then it will form the complex salt. So, this is a very good taste of copper ion. Now, similar thing can happen for silver also and it is also a silver ion detection. What is happening? You take silver nitrate solution in a test tube, okay. it is colorless, we all know that silver nitrate solution is colorless. Now, to this NaCl solution if you add then what will happen? Because this is a source of chloride, so chloride will react with silver nitrate to form a white precipitate it is called curdy white because it is like a curd that we eat the, the precipitate will be like this only and then now aqueous ammonia is added to the precipitate then what will happen. So, if you add the ammonia solution in the silver chloride precipitate then what will happen then the precipitate will dissolve why it will why it will dissolve because it will form some some amine complex silver amine complex that I already showed you. Um, this is because of the formation of silver amine complex. Now, what will happen if you add again the silver uh, uh, if you again add there in the silver amine complex if you again add the HCl what will happen again HCl is added to the solution then what will happen the white precipitate reappears due to the formation of silver chloride again. This I have already explained, but it can be um, you, you can do the experiment in the laboratory because everything every all um, chemicals that is used here is available in the laboratory. So, what you have learnt in the previous lecture that uh, formation of silver amine complex then it is it is breaking to silver chloride again you can do it easily in the laboratory. Here in the reaction also the shown silver nitrate with chloride it gives silver chloride cardi white precipitate you can see the precipitate then you add ammonia solution it will form it will solubilize then it will form the silver amine complex after that you add some HCl to it and then you will get back your silver chloride as a cardi white precipitate this is a very good demonstration and indeed it is a method for silver plus detection also. Now, very interesting demonstration of green chemistry I will ask you some questions here. So, please listen carefully say for example, silver nitrate which you know that it is a very most common silver salt and it is used for chloride ion uh, detection. Then one can easily observe a cardi white precipitate formed from silver nitrate and HCl that I have already told you okay. and this is a test for chloride ion and it is also we use this reaction in the chloride ion determination also we all know Morse method. Okay. In turn it is a method for silver ion also. Now, this the, the property of silver ion is silver chloride is that it is soluble in concentrated HCl, okay. it is soluble in concentrated HCl please remember this. Now, we do another experiment what we do we take a test tube. Okay this is a test for sulphate. So, similarly the test for sulphate ion is performed with the water soluble barium chloride we all know. How we do barium chloride produces white crystalline barium sulphate precipitate with sulphate ion in water barium sulphate is insoluble you have already learned from the solubility product in the earlier um, lectures. Okay. But the property is different he both are white precipitate silver chloride and barium sulphate but a silver chloride is cardi white precipitate which sticks to the to the surface of the test tube but barium sulfate is crystalline precipitate which uh, you can see it okay now barium sulfate is insoluble in all acids and alkalis so see the difference in the properties so if i ask you that how can you say both are solid both are white solid precipitates but how can you say which one is silver chloride and which one is barium sulfate then you can easily tell that okay, in one um, precipitate if I add HCl it will dissolve 
in another it will not dissolve. So, which one dissolves is AgCl and which does not dissolve is barium sulphate. This is a test by adding some chemicals. This is not green, green chemistry approach you know that we have to do it without using some reagent okay, or without using um, too many things. If we can do something then it is a green approach. Okay. So, my question is coming now. Now, say two test tubes I have given in one case it is having the silver chloride, another case it is having another test tube it is having barium sulphate, okay. one containing barium sulphate precipitate in water and another silver chloride in water. Both are white precipitate, you are not given any HCl to test. So, how you can test without putting any reagent, how can you tell something is AgCl and something is barium sulphate? This if you can do that then it is a green chemistry approach, green chemistry protocol. Can you do that? This is my question, can you do that? Yes, you can. You can think of classical photography, okay. classical for now everybody is using the digital uh, camera. So, now uh, we are almost forgetting the classical photography, where silver salts are used, okay. where silver salts are used. If you hold both the test tubes in sunlight, in the classical photography also we do the same thing okay we expose the silver salt with light okay and then it becomes colored in black silver chloride it will become black now if you hold both the test tubes in sunlight for a small period of time then in one then one ppt one precipitate will turn black and the other will remain white which one will turn black and which one which one will remain will remain the same so, silver chloride which will that will turn black, why because with photon you know that this will decompose to form the silver okay, and silver is black and barium sulphate will not react with the photon. So, it will remain the same, it is a very simple experiment to understand okay. and this is this is a green chemistry protocol, green chemistry approach. Okay. Now, I will give I will tell you another very simple experiment okay, that we use in chloride determination okay, where we use the potassium chromate as the indicator okay, for chloride determination. Now, can you reverse the charge of a colloid? You all know that colloids are stable uh, particles okay, because of their uh, stability how they become stable because mostly they are they are uh, uh, some ions are adsorbed onto it okay, either positive or negative, but usually negative ions are adsorbed on it and they repel each other and they become stabilized. Okay. So, I will tell you about two experiments. Okay. Silver nitrate solution you take, okay. it is very common in a test tube you take silver nitrate solution and you add excess NaCl to it. Okay. When you add excess NaCl, so, some part of silver plus will form the silver chloride as the precipitate and it is cardioid precipitate you all know. And then because you have added excess sodium chloride, so chloride ion will be will be in excess okay. and in the solution there are many ions. Okay. What is there? There is some sodium ions that is coming from here sodium chloride, there is the chloride ion which is because you have used excess, so some chloride ion will remain and there will be some nitrate ion which is coming from silver nitrate. Now, who will who will adsorb onto the silver chloride because I said that the colloids are always stabilized by charge. Okay. So, who will adsorb onto it? It has the choice different choice. So, who will actually you see that it will always prefer to have some ion which is is family member. What is that? Here in his family who is there? Silver is there and chlorine is there. So, either silver ion or chloride ion will be deposited, deposited means adsorbed onto it. There is no silver ion because you have taken less amount of silver nitrate compared to sodium chloride. So, all silver ion is precipitated as silver chloride, but you have excess chloride. So, neither nitrate will adsorb onto it nor sodium plus, but chloride ion will be because it is a family member of this one. So, it will adsorb and it will form a negatively charged colloid. Okay. It is a colloid, but it is stabilized by negative charge adsorption. Okay. Now, 
just do the reverse thing ok. You take silver nitrate in a solution and then silver you add sodium chloride in trace you add small amount of sodium chloride ok. Now, still here you will get the silver chloride as the precipitate ok, but here you have added NaCl trace amount. So, silver nitrate will be remaining as excess. So, silver plus will be in excess nitrate will come from here and uh, you do not have any silver here because all silver has been uh, you do not have any um, chloride ion here because you have added sodium chloride in trace amount. So, all chloride will be um, will be <coughs> for, will be converted to silver chloride, but you have this choice. So, who will adsorb onto it? Here you see that silver is the family member. So, silver plus will be although it is a plus positive charge, but still it will be adsorbed onto it. So, now you will get the positively charged um, colloid positively charged colloid silver <coughs> same silver chloride in both cases, but in this case because chloride is in excess. So, it will be stabilized by chloride ion and in this case because silver is in excess. So, it will be stabilized by silver ion. Now, once it is obtained then what will happen here if you remember the chloride ion determination then you remember that we use the potassium chromate as the indicator which is yellow in color, but once this is formed because after the titration is over with uh, sodium chloride taken in the conical flask you have added excess of silver nitrate. So, now you get this type of colloid silver plus stabilized colloid. Now, it is silver plus. So, it will immediately attract the chromate ion and then it will be um, uh, for charge neutralization because this chromate ion will be adsorbed here it is attracted by uh, silver plus and then you will see the color brick red color at the end point ok silver chromate this is silver chromate color brick red color in the end point at the end point. So, this is a very interesting observation interesting a, a experiment that you can easily perform in the laboratory. Now, now comes the hardness determination we always do the hardness determination by EDTA titration ethylene diamine tetra acetic acid. How we all know that hardness is caused by whom by multivalent cations although uh, many um, many people think that it is caused by calcium ion or magnesium ion, but actually um, it can be caused by other ions also which are multivalent like iron ferrous or maybe manganese or even may be strontium uh, SR 2 plus barium 2 plus anything, but usually strontium barium they do not occur in nature, but this iron and manganese always occurs in nature in many states we see that uh, manganese 2 plus is present in the ground water same is true for iron in many places you see that ground water contains iron in huge quantity ok. Now, the hard waters are those waters that that require considerable amount of soap to produce lather this is the definition of hard water. And hard water produces scales why because in hot water pipes heaters boilers because of the um, because of the formation of calcium uh, salt deposited ok. Now, calcium or magnesium salt now um, now when we determine the hardness that is we determine the calcium magnesium uh, uh, ions then we use the uh, the indicator which is called areochrome black t EBT ok and we do the titration with the disodium salt of EDTA. We, many people say that we do the titration with EDTA, but it is not true because EDTA is not soluble ok. It is a weak acid we now all know that weak acid are that uh, are weak electrolyte ok. So, they do not uh, sol uh, get solubilized in water mm, that is why we use disodium salt or tetrasodium salt of EDTA ok. Now, what is happening we take the um, hardness uh, hard water in the conical flask then we add EBT a few drops and then EBT color is blue actual original color of EBT is blue, but because there is some calcium magnesium ions present in the water and um, the um, and also we uh, we um, maintain the pH in alkaline range by ammonium hydroxide ammonium chloride buffer that I already told you in the um, that buffers uh, I have already explained in the acid base chapter ok, but here uh, we use that buffer 
anyway so after that we start uh, start our titration with tdtf now what color in initially what color we see is the color of the complex formed between a few ions of uh, calcium magnesium ions with the ebt that means ebt has blue color but uh, when it complexes with calcium magnesium ions then it becomes rose red color so initially in the start we see the rose red color we start with edta now what will happen titration is started with edta edta is a very good complexing agent so uh, it complexes with the free calcium magnesium ions present in the conical flask that is sample water now slowly slowly edta concentration is increased it uh, it uh, all the calcium magnesium ions get complexed with the edta um, by then uh, while reaching the end point now end point is reached so what to, what will happen all the calcium magnesium ions will be consumed by the uh, edta through the complex formation now what will happen now the edta two three drops extra will will attack the complex formed between aerochrome black tea and the calcium magnesium ion that is rose red color i told you so it will attack the edta will attack that complex also and then what will happen then that calcium magnesium ions will be captured by the edta and then the aerochrome black tea will remain free and then you will get back the dye color that is the blue color at the end point now the question is that why edta finally it is breaking this complex ebt calcium magnesium ion complex that is the question and here another thing is very important to to mention that in the in this complex uh, metal ion edta complex the stoichiometry is 1 is to 1 okay now this is this is for calculation uh, we need this thing okay anyway so now my question is why it is it is breaking this complex that is that uh, that uh, metal ion indicator complex because this is breaking that complex because metal edta complex is much more stable so who is more stable that will be formed okay and if you compare the k value that is the um, uh, that equilibrium constant um, or you can tell in the case of complex you can tell that uh, stability constant or formation constant if you compare then you will see that k metal edta complex is to k metal indicator complex is very very large it is more than 10000 you see 10 to the power 4 that means it is very stable so edta will break this complex aerochrome black tea uh, metal uh, that that complex formed between metal ion and indicator uh, indicator and then finally indicator will be free that is showing its original indicator color and the metal will be captured by the edta okay so this is a very important part okay and uh, and uh, uh, that has been used for the calcium ion uh, that is not calcium ion actually hardness determination okay so formation complex is such an important thing in equilibrium uh, chemical equilibrium okay now electroplating this is another example uh, which uh, which is very much effective uh, means very much useful when you do uh, means uh, this a uh, this a uh, equilibrium i will tell you later but uh, actually in the electroplating um, uh, industry this uh, type of equilibrium is used uh, for uh, for electroplating um, the um, some metal uh, metal utensils or metal some uh, something uh, with uh, silver or gold or copper or nickel so why we do the uh, the plating because to protect the the um, the uh, maybe iron or brass uh, we want to protect it or we want to make it beautiful by glow gold plating or silver plating so we use this now uh, the important part i will tell you in case of metal plating the electroplating bath bath okay bath that consists of a solution of the salt of the plating metal by which you will plate okay say for example silver or gold like that so that salt um, is there in the uh, in the metal in the bath electroplating bath and we use a cathode a, a cathode is used what is the cathode it is the article to be plated 
on which you want to plate the silver or gold ok. And the anode is the plating metal that means, if you want to uh, 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 um, make it with um, silver plating then or gold plating then anode will be that metal ok. And then in the silver plating solution argento cyanide argento means silver argento cyanide is electrolyzed ok. It is not silver nitrate it is argento cyanide. Ag this one AgCN2 potassium like this potassium argento cyanide ok. This is used the anode is a plate of pure silver ok because you want to do silver plating and cathode is, is the article to be plated ok. The electrolytic bath is prepared by adding excess KCN to Ag3 AgCO AgNO3 solution. So, when you add a KCN excess CN to AgNO3 it will definitely form the argento cyanide this one ok. Now, so in your electroplating bath you have argento cyanide which will be electrolyzed as a as the cathode you are using the something which you want to electroplate and the anode you will use you will uh, in the anode you will use the silver ok. Now, if silver nitrate alone is used what will happen why we are using this one that is the main topic here ok. The anion AgCN2 minus it is a complex you can see here it is a cyano complex of silver is only slightly dissociated it is not completely dissociated like silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is a strong electrolyte it will 100 percent dissociate ok, but here it is slightly dissociated. And once it is slightly dissociated, so it will be deposited on the electrode to form a very thin uniform film. So, it will go on in a very slow process ok and then it will form a very thin film of silver uniform thin film of silver. If you use <coughs> silver nitrate in the uh, as the electrolyte then you will get a coarse spongy silver deposit ok, because silver nitrate is a strong electrolyte and it will uh, it will uh, the electrolysis will go on fast and it will you will get a spongy uh, silver deposit ok. This is the beauty of this uh, this electroplating with silver the cyanide ion discharges on the silver then what will happen the in the anode <coughs> the silver uh, the cyanide ion will be dip, uh, discharged to form silver cyanide this silver cyanide will again dissolve in the KCN that you have taken in the bath. So, to form the potassium argento cyanide the reaction is shown here silver nitrate you have taken in the bath silver nitrate and excess KCN which will form the this complex ok. After that this complex will ionize to form this one ok this is uh, this will ionize and then this um, complex of silver cyano complex of silver will again ionize in a slow manner ok that is why it is written here that is only slightly dissociated it is slightly dissociated it is in equilibrium it is slightly dissociated to produce silver plus which will be deposited in the cathode to make the silver plating. But if you use silver nitrate then this type of thin film will not be produced instead you will get a spongy silver deposit which is not wanted ok. So, this is a very good example of the complex formation and its application in electroplating. The same you can do with gold also gold cyano complex you can form ok and to prepare the to make uh, some say, gold plating on something ok. This is a very nice example. So, from the chemical equilibrium uh, chapter or chemical equilibrium di, uh, uh, the discussion on chemical equilibrium we have learnt many things. So, we learnt how to apply chemical equilibrium concept to understand the solubilization and precipitation phenomena in a better way and we can solve many environmental problems. And the concept is also very useful to understand the analytical methods for detection and determination of many analytes. Chemical equilibrium is a very important chapter we must get the uh, proper idea and we must know how to form the equilibrium expressions. Uh, what is the impact and uh, so uh, you can learn from different books, but these books I have uh, taken many examples from these two books you can read these two books to get uh, even better idea.
थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच